brought to you by Form Systems, the leader in API and cloud gateway technology. Hi guys, so my name is Florian Dueto from Dataiku, and today I want to just uh, walk through our product, uh, so Data Science Studio. But first, to tell you why we build this product, is that, well, we feel that data science people today, people working with data, are underserved with current tools. And that today, when you work on data, you do spend lots of time doing not so useful things like waiting for a machine learning job to end. Well, to some extent, that's something we don't really solve because machine learning has to actually work and the algorithm needs to some time. What is more worrying is that when you are a data science people today, you do spend a significant amount of time doing data plumbing, meaning uh, connecting data together, and that's not so fun. And what's even more worrying is that when you are doing data today, you might end up like this. And in this photo, you've got at least two uh, big problems. Well, first is that you are wearing a suit, and that uh, data science people wearing a suit is possibly a huge problem. And second is that you end up being a data cleaner, meaning you do spend most of your time working on data and data cleansing and not on actually building a model. And you probably don't want to do that anymore. And so it's with this perspective in mind that we've built our tool, Data Science Studio, where there is a free version of the tool available that you can start downloading right now from our website. And we also have an IMI that you can use uh, to run it pre-built. But just let me get you through the tool itself and start playing with it. And so, well, let's say I start a new project, a new tutorial project. If you want to follow this tutorial, you can actually get it from our website here. Yeah. And so first step with the tool, with our tool, is that you can use it in order to, well, just get some data in. And so with the Taiku, the Data Science Studio, you can connect to your existing Hadoop cluster or load some files or some SQL data sets or whatever. And so, for instance, let's say I want to just analyze some data from my CRM and actually I do sell some t-shirts, like this one. And so the tool will, well, I just connected to some CRM database dump. The tool detected the file format for me and stuff like that. And I can then, well, yeah, obviously there's an issue here, like the first line is blank on my data set. Well, I just can possibly just fix it like that. Mm, looks okay and I can start playing with the data. Hmm. Here's are some missing data, obviously, and inconsistent data. Well, I have to check. Well, first thing you can do with that IQ is kind of use and browse your data set and start playing with the data in order to cleanse it. Meaning, for instance, was you might decide to remove this line because there is a missing data here. And so I just remove the line. You can try to play with the dates, and you can use a tool in order to kind of parse the date. Mm. And so it will kind of analyze all the dates and find the right date format for you, which is good. And then you can start playing around. So I've got a date. Well, actually, to analyze the data, the date itself is not so significant. Maybe I want to add some more relevant feature, like, I don't know, get the holidays. Mm -hmm. And this way, I just added a new column in my data set where I've got indicators for weekends and bank holidays, which might be interesting. I can also, I don't know, analyze the content of the columns themselves. Well, here, obviously, I've got some spurious data on my t-shirts. I can just say, 
Mm, let's merge those two kind of values together. Okay. It's merged. And so actually, while playing with my data here, I was kind of reading, writing a sample script that is transforming my data. And well, first feature of that IQ is that you can then save this and replay it. And yeah, you've got new data. And you just started to write a simple workflow which will help you get from dirty data to actually usable data for your uh, machine learning problem. So yeah, here I've got some uh, more interesting data. I can start and maybe uh, visualize it a little bit. I don't know, take a look at the t-shirts. And see the sales of t-shirts per category and so on. So I start, I can start uh, playing with a little bit with my data. Well, good. Then, well, I may have some other data available, like for instance, actual CRM data with mm, some customer information. I've got user ID for my customers and I don't know their birth date because they are kind enough to give me their birth date when they are subscribing to my website. And so I don't know, I can again start transforming my data and pass this date. And then I can mm, compute the date in years then that date, and that would give me the age of my customers. Good. Can remove this, not so interesting. I can remove this, not so interesting. Yeah, even this. Blah. And I just build a new data set with the age of my customers. That's an interesting new feature. And then I can go back and I don't know, on this one, ask for a join, and join the user ID from here with the age of my customers, retrieve the age, and I've got a new age column. And I just enrich my CRM data with a new column, which can be significant for uh, my machine learning problem, I don't know yet. So that's the general idea of our tool, is to help you kind of work on the data in order to extract and enrich the data to get the most significant features. But let's get to an actual kind of real uh, machine learning problem related to that. So right now, let's imagine that I've built a data set with some uh, initial customer interaction and aggregate values about my customers. The data set would look like that. For each customer, I've got his birth, birth date, country, uh, the number of pages visited on my website during the first session, the price of the item he actually bought, and so on. And I actually also have some revenue value related to, related to my customer. And so the kind of question you might have is, can I build a model for the lifetime value or the revenue of my customer given the data? and to actually start building this kind of predictive model. So to do that with the Taiku, first you might also want to do some feature generation stuff, like again, parsing the date, and uh, computing the age of the guy. Okay, that's good. You, well, that's, Kind of interesting. But, well, something I also might want to do is to add some external data, because external data is usually good. Like here, I've got some data set with the GDP, which relates uh, average GDP per persona 
in each country in the world. And so I might want to use it in order to enrich my data set where I've got the country, and for either or another, I might want, not want to do uh, training on the country itself, just because I feel it's not right to do training on countries. But do the training on the GDP feature is interesting. So I just added this new data set, and then I can, well, go back to where I was, and ask for a join um, on the country with country GDP and retrieves the GDP itself. Uh, oh, that's not working at all. Uh, 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 yeah, I think I know why. Country was actually in lowercase in my other data set, so I can start using the fuzzy join. Okay, it starts working a little bit. Maybe I should just ask for text normalization. And yeah, okay. I just joined my two data sets using a fuzzy join, which is good. And then I can remove, for instance, this column. I can remove the user ID because it might not make sense for my model itself. And then I create a new data set. And so I've just got this new data set with some revenue, which is actually the target variable I want to predict. And I can start building a predictive model like that. Hmm. Better this way. And so actually I'm starting right now to build this model. And what the tool did for me is to kind of analyze the data itself and select some uh, feature engineering pipeline and generate it for me that handles things such as missing values and uh, how to demify the categorical variable in my data set and so on. And what I will actually do is test some algorithms against my data set to actually build the model. And using that IQ, I just can start to train the model like that. So actually, I selected two algorithms here. And so it's training against those two. So in that IQ, you can actually reuse scikit-learn and H2O as a backend for machine learning. And you can have some pre-built interface in order to select what classifier would be used. But you can also, if you want, insert your own code your own Python code for in, in, inserting and using your own classifier. So yeah, he actually built a model. So I've got a linear regression model and a random forest. And random forest uh, seems to be winning. Well, random forest usually win. Well, it depends, but. And so I can take a look at what were the most important variables in my data set and so on. And I can actually use, then save this model in order to add the model back into uh, my workflow for uh, scoring against this model against new data. So I just built a model for my customers. Um, something interesting I can try to take a look at is actually if I'm a real data scientist, I most probably want to get into the code itself and kind of hack my model in some way because I really like to hack models. And so I can start getting the code for the training algorithm itself. And here in this IPython notebook, I'm starting to play with the data and actually I just rebuild step by step the model. Good, so I could hack around. Something I find amusing enough is to actually try to hack a little bit, oh, sorry, 
with this uh, CLF object, which is funny enough. And I've got a pre-built formulas I really like, which is this one. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think I got tested by copy-paste, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so here, for instance, I'm inspecting the coefficient from the model itself in order to see what, where in the linear model the most, the variable which were the most used and here, for instance, by uh, multiplying the standard deviation from the standard, from the train set with the coefficient, I can have some evaluation, actually, of the impact of each variable on average using the linear model. And I don't know, maybe I can use that in order to communicate with people within my team about uh, how to use this linear model and what the purpose of it. So that's the general idea of the Taiku. But then, our tool can also be used to build kind of more elaborate uh, application. So simple codeless application using the Taiku would look like that, meaning workflows where you transform the data visually, you build a model, and then you get you can score the data, simple enough. More elaborate application could look like that. Mm. No, sorry, not this one. So that's a more complex workflow. And this one, for instance, is a workflow where we get some open data about uh, fuel prices in France. And so this data initially, and the goal of the project at the end is to make some analysis about the prices, what are the causes for variation in time, is it related to brands, where the fuel is, competitive pressure, and stuff like that. So when you're working in such, with uh, such projects, you might want to get some different data sources, like scrape some data, about uh, frail brands in order to consolidate with your existing uh, prices, timelines, data sets, and so on. And you might end up with projects which look that, like that, where you combine some visual data transformation with actually SQL code, or uh, I don't know, I guess some Python code, and so on. And so that's another aspect of our tool is that we believe that significant data project today cannot only be done visually by clicking on a user interface. To some point, you need to code in some situation, meaning uh, writing a SQL query or writing your R script or writing a Python script and so on. And so you can use a tool as a repository for your team where you can put this Python code and manage it, meaning using it in order to do all the connectivity between the input data set and the output data set and help you get a, reproduc a, a, a workflow that is easy to reproduce working on your data. Another aspect of our tool is that, well, when working with data, you might want to share some visualization. And so this is the kind of visualization you can share using the tool. Here, for instance, you've got some analysis about the different types of fuels and different brands over time. But also sometimes you might want to build some real application, meaning uh, HTML apps that uses the models of the data set 
in some uh, visual and elaborate way. And so you can use that IQ in order to actually uh, hmm, build those kind of HTML app, meaning that you've got within that IQ a small editor when you can write some JavaScript code and some Python code in order to build your own kind of custom API that uses the data sets you've built with the product and run them in a managed way in order to, at the end, build this kind of visual application on top of the data itself. So here, for instance, in this app, we actually populate a Postgres database using the tool and leverage uh, PostGIS in order to uh, work on the data on a geographical level and then display that to the users. And in my opinion, all the interesting kind of problems you've got in data today relates into mixing some data sets, lots of different technologies, open source technologies, and then get things done. Other things you can do with the tool is actually leverage Hadoop, meaning that you can run either Pig, which is not installed on my laptop, or Hive, which is installed on my laptop using the tool, meaning that you can use that IQ in order to uh, populate some data into an existing Hadoop cluster, and then use Hive, for instance, as a way to transform the data, join or merge data sets together. And so here we give you a way to actually, I don't know if it works. Hmm. I probably should have started my Hadoop cluster before clicking on this button. Well, whatever. Ah, yeah. So in order to uh, use SQL queries, in order to just create new data set in a managed way again. So here, for instance, this project is about getting some uh, mm, query logs and display logs and click logs from your website in your, uh, and use this, this information in order to optimize your search engine by enlivening uh, past queries, merge that with displays and clicks, and use that in order to build some uh, custom ranking function for your uh, search system, which is actually a topic we will also talk about tomorrow in a presentation. And so I think it's typical of um, data projects you've got today where actually you need, you might want to use some uh, visual data transformation to do some easy stuff on the data, like normalization, parsing, and stuff like that. You might want to use a dupe, either pig or hive, or uh, to do the heavy lifting on the data, like joining data sets together, compute complex aggregation on the data with a significant data volume. And ACK, some stuff in Python using pandas or similar libraries in order to get things done quickly and interact with the data in a number of different ways. The challenge is that each time you interact with the data in a different tool, you have to be able to build a workflow that combinates all those tools and you, that you will be able to reproduce every day and rerun every day. And actually, that's uh, the end of my demo, which means I do have time to take some questions. Brought to you by Form Systems, the leader in API and cloud gateway technology.